Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. We are going to be talking about these three babies over here, my three yoga mats. And this is the video that I wish I would have been able to find before I had purchased these. I looked into different reviews on different yoga mats as I was getting ready to purchase some of the other ones. And I wasn't really able to find anything on one of these specifically. So today I'm going to break it down talking about my three mats, what I like and what I don't like. We're going to go through some of the pros and cons of them, how long I've had them, how I like using them, and which one I would like to buy again. So the first mat we're going to be talking about is the first mat that I got all the way back in 2017. So we've been together for almost six years now and that is the mat. The mat 5mm from Lululemon. I got this mat in the summer of 2017 when I went to do my booty yoga teacher training back in Ohio and literally every girl in the studio had this mat so I was like well it must be good and six years later I can definitely tell you it's still good. So it's got like some rough around the edges kind of bit going on here but Overall, it's quite nice. Yeah, so they say it's double-sided. There's this side that's supposed to be a bit grippier and then there is the smooth side. I don't know anybody who has ever used the grippy side facing up. We have only ever used the smooth side facing up and during sweaty practices and that training that summer, my hands never slipped. My feet never slipped and the grip on this is incredible. If I were to start practicing right now when it's kind of cold, my hands would slip a little bit, right? But as my body warms up and my feet get warm, my hands get warm, the grip on the smooth side is incredible. So they say that this mat is made of natural rubber with some synthetics mixed in. Um, it does contain latex, so if you're allergic to latex, I don't recommend this one. Uh, they say the properties of this are naturally antibacterial and antimicrobial. I hardly ever clean them. And when I do clean any of my mats, I just use a warm washcloth and plain water and I just wipe them down and then I leave them on the floor to dry. So I've never had any issues with mold or mildew or smell or any of that sort of stuff. I also never ever ever use any of the mat sprays that are provided in any yoga studio anywhere. I don't know what's in it, I don't know what it's going to do to the mat, and I don't know what it's going to do to my skin when I come in contact with it later. So I prefer to just use plain water, I've never had any issues with it, and my mats tend to hold up for quite a long time. Um, there are some downsides to this. The most important one being that it's extremely heavy. It's about 2.5-ish, no, 2.4 kilograms, and it's heavy, right? I've carried it to Berlin, to Bratislava, back and forth to the US, and it's heavy. So. That is a downside to this mat, but if you just are looking for a good mat for your home yoga practice, then I could definitely recommend this one from Lululemon. You can find it on their website for approximately 98 euros, I believe. I will link all of the mats in the description box below if you want to go do more exploring on your own. The second mat we are going to be talking about is the B mat by B Yoga. This is the B mat every day in four millimeters in this deep blue color and I absolutely love it. Um, I got this mat in the spring summerish of 2020 when everything was on lockdown and I was looking for another mat because my boyfriend and I were doing home workouts and we only had the Lululemon one and then like a cheap one from Decathlon or Sportissimo or something like that. So we were looking for a second one to do home workouts. And I saw some reviews online for, you know, life form mats, Manduka mats, Jade mats, so many other kinds that I was looking to see if I wanted to get or possibly just another Lululemon. 
and I talked to some friends who said, ah, check out the B mat. It's super grippy and it's great. Now, in the booty yoga community, if you say B mat, you're gonna assume that it's this booty yoga mat. But this is different, okay? That mat I have tried, and it's kind of something in between this and that, but I've only tried it once, I don't really have a lot of experience with it. And in the spring of 2020, I did not want to be ordering something from overseas because everything was, you know, stopped and shut down. So I talked with a friend who said, check out BMAT. And BMAT is incredibly hard to find in Europe considering that it's made in Spain. It's made in Spain, it's 100% rubber and also 100% recyclable, but it's insanely grippy. Right? You put your hands on it, you put your feet on it, they're not going to move. You put them there, you stick like a little tree frog to a tree. It weighs approximately like 1.9 kilograms, so it's a little bit lighter than the Lululemon mat. Um, for cleaning this one, again, I only use just like a wet washcloth with water. Um, not a paper towel, because a paper towel will destroy or this mat will destroy a paper towel if you try to use it uh, because of the grip, right? So cleaning this one is a little bit trickier, but I found that just plain water works best. Again, I have never, ever, ever used the mat spray from the yoga studio on any of my mats and especially this one because I don't want it to lose that grippiness. So this mat costs approximately 89 euros and as of right before making this video the website for europe the bmat version was down so i don't know we're gonna have to search around and try to find it because i guess good things are hard to come by yeah so that's a bmat i absolutely love it the third mat i have is the small one that i got for my birthday this year it's the pro light travel mat by manduka it's two millimeters, two and a half millimeters thick. And at first when I got it, I thought, oh gosh, my knees are not gonna be able to hold up with this. But my knees actually do quite well. Uh, this mat is made from like non-toxic PVC. It's certified to be toxin free by some organization and it's made in Germany. So I'll include the link below where you can go read more about the materials that this mat is made of over there because it's a little bit confusing um it's double-sided and on this side the side that goes towards the floor it has these little circles that make it real sticky on the floor so the mat doesn't slide but on the other side the practicing side it's nice and smooth however if you get even the slightest bit sweaty you are going to slide your hands are going to slide, your feet are going to slide and some of the yogis that I have talked to, the students and practitioners both, they have said this is one of their favorites, the Manduka mats, because of that slipperiness. This mat is really nice, it's really portable. It only weighs about 1.1 kilograms, so I've been using it for um yoga teaching throughout the city and taking it around different places although we have just got nice new mats at the studio and i am using those all the time because it's quite similar to the lululemon ones anyway so this is the manduka mat it costs approximately 70 euros again i'll provide the link in the comment section or description box below so you can go down there and check out more of like the materials and stuff like that so those are my yoga mats and if i had to buy any of them again i would absolutely buy the b mat it's super grippy it's super bright and i love that it's 100 percent made from natural rubber made in spain you know things like that unfortunately it's kind of hard to find in europe so I'm very thankful that I don't actually have to buy a new yoga mat anytime soon. And yeah, that's, that's kind of it. So if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the box below. You can also leave your personal recommendations on what you think is a good yoga mat and what you look for and tips and tricks and things like that. So thank you for watching. Good luck on finding the yoga mat that's best for you. And until next time, bye.